you know, knowing him the way that you have and kind of seeing a lot of the response we're seeing on social media um, when it comes to him, you know, being proud of the company, you know, that he's creating, but he's also kind of talking about WWE and things like that. But what do you kind of make of, you know, with the whole rampage and the counter programming and just kind of knowing him and how he's kind of just, you know, not reacting to it, but just kind of taking that in and kind of, do you feel like they're kind of just kind of staying the course or do you think um, just kind of seeing what the landscape is and kind of going from there sort of thing? What's right. the so came, yeah. I mean, that came as a shock to me, right? I didn't know that was happening because those are his cards that he keeps close to his chest. Um, I believe they counter programmed us first, right? So like they announced that they were going to do an extra half hour um, because they were on FS1 and they kind of wanted to go against us. So this is his way of, at the end of the day, you know, the way I look at it is more content for the wrestling fan. Um, does it make you choose? Yeah, that's what's fun about it. Um, you know, and are we going to win? Who knows? Uh, I don't think there is a winner or loser. I think, you know, the fans win automatically. Um, and it puts our, our fans at a, I mean, our wrestlers at like a, on a different level now, because instead of just filming for elevation or something like that, now we're live again. So now we have like Lee Moriarty, for instance, is going to be on a live buy-in and, you know, that's great experience for him and to be out there with a guy like Bobby Fish. And then you have a, a massive match like, you know, Brian Danielson versus Minoru Suzuki. And we're just kind of, we're giving it to you for free because that's what we want to do, right? Like our pay-per-view model isn't the, isn't the be all end all. Um, it's just about creating good, good content for the fans. And that's what Tony really wants to do. And, you know, for him to, the way people are taking it that he's just trying to go against WWE. I mean, it is what it is. Like you can say that and that's how it looks. And maybe deep down, that's what he wants. But at the end of the day, I think he's just trying to do his best to put out the greatest show possible and have the most eyes on it as well. Yeah. And that's all as a fan that you want is just someone that works hard to put on an entertaining show. <laughs> I can't, no, believe, you know, it's just I mean, I, people hate on that. Yeah. Not only that, like it's fun. You know what I mean? Like when I see banter between, like the first time we beat NXT, right? The first week. Oh, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Cool. Like they didn't have to come at us. You know what I mean? But they did. And it was fun. It was lighthearted. No one's like backstage thinking like, oh, my God, we have to beat them or we have to do this. That's not what we think about. We think about putting on the greatest content possible. And if it happens to beat them, great. If it doesn't beat them, you know, then we got to work harder, of course. But I don't think we're just competing with you know, WWE, especially on Rampage Night or even now NXT uh, Wednesday on Dynamite because NXT has moved. So I think we're just competing with the challenge, uh, guys, grocery games. <laughs> like it's kind of absurd, the, the type of stuff that we do compete with um, that has nothing to do with the, the WWE or any other wrestling company for that matter. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the Goldbergs. I like the Connors. I like comedy sitcoms. Sure. <laughs> even yeah, that, of course. <laughs> Of course, you know, I I mean, it's just one of those things like I think the greatest content always wins. So uh, we're doing a pretty good job right now. Um, you know, we do have a lot of young talent that's still learning, which is why Elevation and Dark and these shows are great for them as well. And then when they get thrusted into the spotlight, you know, like uh, the acclaim the other night with the Lucha Brothers, you know, they put on a great show and and fans seem to be pretty happy with everything. Yeah. Um, you talk about the young talent coming in. Um, you know, you're you're kind of right on this there with the Nightmare fa uh, Factory. Um, just with all these big names coming in, the big stars. Just talk about the balance of bringing in these top talent, but also you have the homegrown talent as well, and then also ones that you're kind of building for the future. So just talk about the challenges of that, and that kind of how that's now become more prevalent now that you're having all these kind of big names coming in left and right, and kind of making sure everyone has the right adequate amount of TV time to kind of grow. Yeah. So, I mean, I think when AEW first started, that's what it was, right? It was a bunch of, you know, there was a couple huge names, you know, uh, Chris Jericho, Cody Rhodes, you had the Bucks and Kenny had wrestling fans really knew who they were. Um, and then you had a bunch of unknowns, your jungle boys and, you know, these guys that I've never even heard of. Um, and they, that's how they get elevated. Like, you know, Jericho wrestling hangman for the first ever AEW championship, like that elevated hangman. Whether they thought he should have won, it doesn't matter. Like that elevated him. He was in the ring with Chris Jericho, um, Orange Cassidy doing his program with Jericho. So like, it's always been like that. Um, I think it's more important now that we bring in more bigger stars, right? So like, it's more important now to to get those big stars with the younger talent, like Daniel Garcia uh, with CM Punk this week. Um, 
you know, and stuff like that, right? Like Will Hobbs with CM Punk, like those put these guys on a huge platform and it's kind of a sink or swim type deal. And, and it seems like they're swimming pretty fine. So um, yeah, I'm excited for it. Like I said, does it, is it harder to be on TV now? Probably. Um, but that's the business that we're in. And there's, I always say this, you could do two things. You can sit around and complain or you could just get over. And I just say that even myself, like I have to figure that out now. Okay. Now that we have all this other talent here, the pandemic's over, we're trying to sell tickets um, and, and draw huge ratings. You know, we have to figure out how to get over with the audience to the point where, you know, they're going to watch and, uh, and also keep our bosses happy, keep the other wrestlers happy. Like it's a hard job that we're in and, uh, but it's the greatest job in the world. I mean, 